I had a chance to chat with a man who acquires these tiny little treasures from all across the globe, and he is called the Indiana Jones of Seeds. Green, green. Our family sold almost everything, including our house in the city, to start a farm in the country. Join us as we share with you our adventures while we discuss farming, fitness, and everything in between. And don't forget, living in a year too. We are Farm Fit. Greetings, friends. We are here once again at Baker Creek. And this time I have the opportunity to sit down with the founder here, Jerry Gettle. And they have a lot of great things going on here and it is truly an inspirational place to be. And Jerry, I wanna thank you for inviting us and allowing us to come out here and just see all the work that is going on here. It is really exciting and really neat. Uh, as we're looking around, I want to ask you, what is, what inspires you? Well, you guys are doing some fantastic things. Probably what inspires me is just uh, finding that new, new, new old variety. You know, rediscovering something, uh, finding that red meated radish from China, or that uh, yard long bean, or that bitter gourd, or goji berry, or um, whatever it might be. You know. Uh, new cucumber variety, something that's totally unique. There's always, always something out there that's just totally like, this year we're growing butterfly peas, which is a bright blue pea uh, flower. It's a, a related to, it's a re relative of regular peas, but it's a, a tropical plant and it makes bright blue flowers. It turn, makes a beautiful bright blue tea. Wow. You can color any kind of food pretty much. And it's just an amazing, amazing, beautiful plant. So that's one of the things we're excited about, but that's what, just every every new plant and every new story is what really makes it exciting with heirlooms. It's being part of uh, being able to collect and preserve and pass on all these amazing, amazing seeds. That is fantastic. And as you can see where we're at, we're in a warehouse that has so many seeds in here. And I know a lot of you aren't familiar with a lot of the rare varieties that are out there. A lot of you are used to some of the things that you see just in the, in the grocery store and they're just they're just really clones and they all look the same, but there's so many more varieties out there. And for those of, uh, Jared, how would you describe what heirloom seeds are and, and some of these rare seeds are for the viewers who, who aren't really familiar with, with them? Yeah, most of our seeds are things that are passed down from generation to generation, whether they be here in the U.S. or in Mexico or China or Europe or wherever they may have came from. A lot of these seeds are things that have been in their families. There's other things that we offer. We offer a few things that are new created things that uh, maybe a plant breeder who's still using traditional methods, um, usually home uh, gardeners or small hobby farmers who are still using the same methods that uh, they were using, you know, 150 wow. years ago to Sorry. create new varieties. But the majority of what we offer, probably, you know, 95%, is really old, you know, really uh, traditional varieties that might have been passed down. For example, I see right here is the Illinois, uh, and a squash called Illinois. And uh, it's a variety that was sent to us by a customer. And it's a big uh, white Kusha type squash. A lot of people in the South grow these big Kusha varieties. But this came from a, a neighbor, a farm that was a neighbor's to where Abraham Lincoln's parents lived. Wow. And they've had it in their family for like 170 years, something like that. It's 160, 170 years, and they received the seed in their family. They've had it for like seven generations or something, but they received the seed from Abraham Lincoln's parents who settled next to them. Wow. And they brought it, I believe, when they moved from Kentucky, was it? I believe it was from Kentucky to Illinois, or was it Indiana at the time? They moved, hopped around a couple times uh -huh. before they got to Illinois there. But anyway, they brought this squash with them and they, the family's been keeping it alive and passing it down. Wow, that's fantastic. And they wanted us to get some seed. So that's just, you know, one of the stories. There's a, you know, there's a Delaware black corn there from, you know, a native corn. And uh, it's just, you know, variety after variety, almost every variety here has a really interesting story, you know, about who it came from, the history. Uh, and a lot of these stories are still being unlocked. A lot of times we don't know the stories and that's really what it's all, that's what heirloom seeds are all about. Is, telling the traditions and stories and passing them on to the next generation. Wow. And it's important to know where your food comes from, to know your farmer, know the methods of how your food is produced. But having a part in using heirloom seeds actually helps you to go even further in knowing the stories even behind that, to know the story behind the seeds. So that's pretty exciting that uh, a lot of these seeds, all these seeds have these different stories that have been passed down and have a part of families that have been around for generations, that is pretty exciting. Yeah, family, some things like this one is family related, you know, to family, other things are like the, some of the native corns are tribal related, they're part of families, but also tribes. 
and, uh, and, and, and a lot of things are, you know, national like treasures, you know, like a corn that might be popular throughout a whole country and or a state, you know, so each here, you know, or, or a local region like the Ozark region or, you know, down in the, uh, North Carolina, there's mountains there with the popular, like the old uh, greasy, greasy beans, you know, you go out west, nobody knows what you're talking about, but <laughs> in certain areas, people that have certain varieties have just been there forever. And uh, unfortunately, you know, supermarkets and mass transportation has made a lot of these varieties disappear. So that's what we're trying to do is hang on to them and at least keep them alive in home gardens. Well, yes. And I like how you call them treasures because they really are treasures. And for those who are watching who are considering maybe participating in helping to preserve these treasures, how would you encourage them to get started and just having a small part to play? Well, there's several ways. You can either buy, you know, heirloom varieties, of course, at farmer's market if you can't garden. Um, but, you know, the best is, you know, get in your own garden patch, even if it's on your patio or wherever you're at, a community garden or your grandpa's garden or your cousins or anybody that wants a garden in general, as long as you have transportation, you know, somebody that has a little bit of space would be glad to have some vegetables or flowers or fruits growing on it. So you just got to basically get out there and start in a small way and try different things, you know, try, try a variety of things. Don't, don't plant all of one thing, try different crops and see what does well for you. Yeah. So a lot of gardeners will get discouraged, they try to grow tomatoes and yeah. they don't do so well, but it isn't just tomatoes. I mean, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of different food crops, let alone flowers and herbs, that you can put in, you know, your garden. So there's, just because one thing doesn't do well, keep trying different, different things. There's so much, uh, Every year we discover, you know, literally dozens of new things. It's like, wow, things we might have heard of, but we've never really planted here or never really cooked. This year uh, we're just uh, winged beans and uh, snake melons. We're cooking those up and uh, they're delicious. They taste like green beans wow. they take the heat. Wow, that's and great. And so uh, every year that's what, you know, that's the fun part about discovering is just get out there and try different things. No matter what climate you're in, almost there's always something that will grow in your climate from desert to you know the arctic yes yes and that's very important too i think it's very beneficial for every human to have some type of participation in growing something whether it be a pot in your kitchen window or or you're growing a garden or there's something just there's something about there's something in us that it really thrives and helps to ha to be growing something and speaking of getting started how did you start breaker creek it was just started as a hobby. My parents and grandparents had all gardened, and all, basically all my aunts and uncles gardened too. And a lot of my cousins and you know extended family. So uh, as a child, I grew up basically in gardens, whether it's my folks or my grandparents or my uncles and aunts. So uh, it's, my earliest memories were in a garden. So I knew if I'm a small child, I wanted to work for a seed company someday when I grew up. And since there wasn't any seed companies in our neighborhood, a lot of the seed companies that I was becoming a teenager were basically disappearing. You know, a lot of the old mail order seed companies. I decided to, you know, release a price list and uh, see what happened. And it was slow for the first year or so, and then, you know, gradually it picked up and picked up. And, uh, you know, it just uh, it takes a long time, you know, to start a business. But, yeah. uh, it's uh, I worked I go 20 years now. It's just you know That's expanded fantastic. a little every year. So that is fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the really blog. Really appreciate you coming out. Thank you very much for having us. And I want to thank you for all the work that you are doing and a lot of your team is doing in helping to preserve these treasures. It really is something, it's a very important work and we, we, we definitely want to thank you. Oh, well, appreciate everything you're doing to educate people and hopefully people will get out there and keep saving their older writers even in their communities. There's always, there's always an old peach tree or a pumpkin or a cow pee or something in every neighborhood that somebody has in their garden club or they have in their backyard so you know get out there look for them and uh, hang on to them there you go and that's it for this vlog we'll see you next time and remember grow on thanks for watching feel free to leave a comment below even if it's just to say hey also make sure you don't miss any of our new videos so subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video. Also, you may want to check out these videos right here and also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.